What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Tyranny. My name is Splattercat. Very happy to have you here today as we hang out for a little while. And we are busting on into a castle. Now, I wanted to get into some of these side rooms. we got to get ourselves paid on up and take what we can from all these locations. What's inside of here? As I cross this corner, yeah, I think we already went through this room right here. And then it would appear that I've gone through that room as well. I'm just panning and scanning through, making sure that I don't mess this up, because it's happened. In the past, I have maybe not been the most perceptive, and sometimes I move on without looting things properly. And since loot is the number one reason why any of us play RPGs here, okay, some of you might play for the story. I'm here for the looties. Let's make sure we got everything. Now, there's a door right here. And does this take me out of doors? Or does this take me upstairs? We'll find out. I'm caught in one of those situations where it's been like a week since I played the game last, and so I'm just trying to make sure that I'm in the right spot. I'm going to throw down on a quick save very, very rapidly. Let's get everybody into formation. Peace Binder. You were the face of the enemy vanguard? Kairos works in mysterious ways indeed. I hope you aren't here to hammer out another truce. We're all out of talk, but we still have a little fight left for you. Before you stands Captain Tarkas Ari, de facto leader of the dwindling Vendrian Guard. Short, sunburned, and agitated even when standing still, her body is a compact sculpture of muscle and bone, and her face is short on symmetry thanks to the scars and dents of a dozen bruises or a dozen brushes with death. Though your lives will certainly end here in the Ascension Hall, she chortles, pointing upwards to the ceiling, and stone arches somehow supporting the massive weight of the spire overhead. Consider yourselves fortunate. Some of the finest rulers of Apex met death by duel in this hallowed hall. Truly, there's no finer place to settle an intractable feud. Sisters. Brothers. Ari looks back at her cadre of soldiers with a solemn nod. It has been a privilege to lead and an honor to share in your final days. Taking a deep breath, she turns to you, waiting silently. Well, we should go with the athletics check for sure. You brandish your weapon menacingly. You had so many chances to surrender. I have orders to make this excruciating and slow. You don't understand our resolve, Fatebinder. The captain looks to her soldiers for a reassuring glance, but is met with nervous eyes and shuffling feet. A moment of silence is broken as one of the Oathbreakers dashes for the exit. Well, that's good. I mean, I've, I've said, like, throughout the course of this game, we've been consistently outnumbered, like, over and over and over again. Coward. Captain Ari stomps her boot with rage. No matter. One soldier will make no difference. In a fight where it's five on five, turning it into a four on four, I think, does matter. I'm pretty sure that it really, really matters. Sisters. Brothers. Ari looks back to her cadre of soldiers with a solemn nod. It has been a privilege to lead and an honor to share in your final days. Taking a deep breath, she turns to you, waiting silently. Like, do we seriously... What's up with that? Like, the people that I know that are throw down just like bruisers, you know what I mean? The dudes that are straight thug, they ain't got to talk before they go into it. They just get into it. They lock eyes and they go. This lady's out here doing, like, demagoguery and speeches just to get her out. See, it doesn't make me feel afraid. She's got to do, like, a big-ass song and dance and, like, speech before she fights. I'm just like, that just makes me think you're really, really nervous. And you're just really worried about this, so you got to have that big dog mouth with that puppy dog ass. Let's do this thing. Well, it seems your uprising amounted to nothing but dead kinsmen. And what did taking Vendrian's well cost you? How many disfavored corpses rust in the valley, and how many choirmen fell to our blades? How goes the endless battle of the blade grave while you deal with us here? Ari laughs, wincing as she clutches her side, and tell me, are the Archons unified in victory? Did the armies bond in camaraderie over our deaths? Our stand here is the first of your problems. Eh, you've traded your kinsmen to slow the inevitable, nothing more. We demonstrated the armies of Kairos could be shamed by stubborn peasants. The Overlord's empire is vast and his armies are numerous. His magic unstoppable, yet he cannot destroy our fighting spirit. Hardly the show of force I'd expect from a truly fearsome Overlord. I hope that argument keeps you warm in the emptiness of the void, Guardsman. Any last words? Yes, a broad smile comes over her face. Tell the voices of Narat that we are most thankful for his aid. We could not have made it this far without his support. Really? That could be a ruse, though. That could be like one final grenade thrown into the middle of your plans. Because something's about to die. Like, I think about it, and with regards to intrigue, if I was about to die, I would say something like that, too. Just to sow discord. Just to throw a little bit of shade on my enemies and make it so maybe they don't trust each other, even if it isn't true. Alright, well, let's do this thing. Pause it on up and have a look here. 
so taking a brief appraisal, it looks like we have two mages to deal with, which we've never had to deal with before. As always, I think mages are probably the most juicy, delicious targets, so we want to make sure we get them first. The elimination of that one archer is really going to help us in the long term. I think that was really, really fortuitous. It's a good thing to have happen, and so our odds went up considerably once that guy's gone. You definitely should not be standing where you're standing right now. I get the feeling that's really, really going to hurt if you stay there. So we've got him fighting over here. They're on that side. Let's go ahead, and we're going to go for a big hit right there. I need everybody putting everything they've got on this dude. Meanwhile, restoring touch needs to go to him so that we can get the cooldown started already. There we go. He's just going to hold the line right there. Like, that's legitimately all that he's going to do. On this side, Blood Soak Stone. Narc's target prone. No, that's not going to be helpful right now. Let's throw a that on there. You stay over on this side. What was the other thing that we got? Erase the record. That's right. Pace uh, puts a preservation seal on him, so if they die... They come back with their health. True dat, yo. We've also got Rot Spear. Crush Between the Teeth gives you Enrage. She's also got a Scarlet Poison. Go ahead and uh, Scarlet Poison up and stay on these guys. I want as much damage done as possible in as short amount of time as possible. This dude looks like he's about to fart explode over here. So maybe we make some attempt at stopping that from happening. I'm going to suggest you use that over here. Go ahead and heal the Fate Binder one more time. He needs it. There you go. That nice big heal. On this side. He's got a couple of HP potions left. Go ahead and get yourself all nice and short up. We're going to keep damage flying around as best as we can. And that should be the kill right there. Now we're going to get everybody on ebb. I just don't like having mages around. I really sincerely don't like having mages around. And if we can do some kind of tangible damage to these little bastards before it gets worse, I would strongly suggest that we do it, because their ability to nuke actually appears to be quite good. We've got Restoring Touch again. It looks like we finally have enough like spells and whatnot to just rotate heals on one person if we really, really need to. Let's go ahead and use a Firebomb on her. And... Come on, fall down. Fall down. There it is. Eb is now down. Reputation ability gained. Unnerving presence. What's a reputation ability? You have gained enough reputation. Unlock a new ability. Open the reputation UI by pressing R to see the new ability available to your character. Oh, wow. Okay, so we get stuff by going to certain levels. Okay. So what did we get? For Vendrian Guard, their wrath has reached such a level that we've gotten a nerving presence. Nearby enemies receive a penalty to their accuracy. Fantastic. Good stuff. Let's go ahead and get rid of the two-hander next. You, sir. I probably could have micromanaged that fight a little bit better, but I was trying to focus on... Oh, I was going to say, I don't know what he's doing right now, but... He should do it a little quicker. And that is Greater Renewal. Oh, that's right. You get weapon damage and armor. Well, here. Throw that on us, then. I do like that double strike we gave him. That shit is working out really, really well. When he ran up on Ebb, he was like, chop, chop. He did so much damage so quickly. Like, it knocked her down to yellow instantly. Which I think was a really, really good thing. That fight wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. But then again, we got rid of... I, I was not looking forward to dealing with two mages at the same time. That's the truth of it. Is two mages at the same time had me a little worried. Because if they had both opened up and they had both been like magic missile at the same time, that's more than enough damage to put one character down to like really low health. And when you're at low health, anything can happen. Like somebody gets a random big hit, anything like that will end you. Oh, we're going to execute them both, by the way. They had a chance to surrender. Although this should get interesting. You worthless gnats. We may die, but others will follow our example. Mark my words. The captain coughs up blood. Crush them! Crush them all! The fifth eye's battle cry falls flat as he surveys the room littered with Vendrian guard bodies. Now that's how it's done, Fatebinder. I should be angry you denied me a scalp or two, but I ought to thank you for saving us the trouble. I am honored to have a hand. Let's see. Now you arrive? I can betray the Alliance right now and I can take the Spire. I can seize power. But then I'll probably have to fight them, right? I don't know. Let, let's take it slow. I don't want to be quite so brazen in my betrayals. I prefer that it be a very Sith-like betrayal. 
if I'm going to betray my overlords, I want to make sure we've got all our grounds covered, because, like, what are we going to do? I take this hall, and then we get swarmed by the Scarlet Chorus and the Disfavored. We don't have an army. We don't have any of the things required to hold this place. I am honored to have had a hand in the victory. You bring glory to the Chorus with your skill at arms and courage under duress. The fifth eye chuckles wickedly under his mask. I do so hope that this is the start of a long alliance, good fate binder. The chorus could really benefit from your strength. The clatter and madness of combat has finally ceased. Ascension Hall is, for the moment, tranquil. Cool. May Pox take your children. Ari slumps to a crouch, her body trembling from injury and fatigue. With those words of defeat, the burning hum you've heard in your head for a few days tapers off into nothing. Your mind returns to the state of quiet you have not felt since you claimed the edict upon Vendrian's well. I lay claim to Ascension Hall. Let us be free of this edict. You feel a tug in your chest as a warm energy begins to form around you. Before you know it, you feel as though you are lighter than air. Whoa. I don't know what just happened, but it was pretty legit looking. I saw it and I was like, oh damn, son. You blink away the last of the luminescent trails in your field of vision. The masonry of Ascension Hall is replaced with wide open space in every direction, save for the slab of ancient stone beneath your feet. High winds above you, sho pushing you off balance. Or high winds shove you, pushing you off balance. The air is cool and thin and unsatisfying to your lungs. Is this? Lantry looks out into the horizon, wide-eyed with excitement. Yes. This must be the mountain spire. When was the last time I... Lantry's eyes look down over the ledge, dumbstruck by the vertical plunge. He backs away. I may need to retch. This is certainly a change. The wind ruffles the feathers in her hair and verse quickly smooths them down. A damn cold change. She peers over the edge. Think I could land on my feet if I jumped? Not that it would matter for long. Kairos, be merciful. What now? Beric spins around on his feet, looking about, trying to take in as much as he can through the narrow visor of his helmet. Every way you look, mountains rise up along a distant horizon. The rivers and forests below bring to mind maps of Vendrian's well, and you quickly trace the Matani, the Irenev, and all the numerous waterways of the region. Higher than you imagined it, this is indeed the pinnacle of the spire at Vendrian's well. How did we get all the way up here? Ari strains to stand up, clutching her side. More importantly, how do we get down? The fifth eye aims a sharp glare at Ari. The Vendrian guard must be rounded up and conscripted. This favor must be run down. The edict is gone, but we're still standing. If I were a conscript down there, I'd run for it and thank my good fortune. Verse draws herself up and takes a welcome breath. She glances down at the ground with less certainty. Send word to the voices of Narat that we're successful. Our glory overfloweth. We would happily carry such good tidings to the Archon, but this humble servant cannot fly. Besides, the voice is a master of all things magical. I highly doubt whatever just happened escaped his attention. Okay, agreed. Anybody witnessing just knows the edict is over, but we should report to Narat and return with any news he has for me. Let's see if we can go through the portal. No telling how stable it is, but look closely and you'll see images of Ascension Hall in the haze. If you have trained eyes, that is. Of course, even if it's not stable, the alternative is jumping, so what do we have to lose? My Kairos Iron Grip, how did... The fifth eye taps his mask in a semblance of deep thought. The currents of magic glow as fire to our eyes. It's strange that you saw this first. Well, glory to Kairos. Keep watch over Vendrian's well for us. 
Consider these lands a gift from the Archon of Secrets, as well as an act of mutual self-interest. These lands are court-controlled, the law-abiding disfavor will think twice about using the valley as a staging ground for fear of offending your master, Tune On. It has been a pleasure in the loins to watch you fight, good fate, Viner. The voices will be most pleased. With the edict resolved, our purpose is clearly in focus. The disfavored must be slain. I don't think I want to bring pleasure to your loins, bro. Especially not when I'm out here fighting and doing all kinds of gangster shit. That is not the response I expected. No doubt, I'm the very definition of an enemy of the Overlord. I didn't just resist, I led others into resistance. So I know what's about to happen, but I know when I've met my match, and like most folk, I'll do whatever it takes to live. If you will show me mercy, I will pledge my life to you, good fate binder. The Tidecaster bows on a knee, lowering her gaze. I know I'm an Oathbreaker, so my word isn't what it used to be, but I promise, if you spare me, I'll serve you well. All right, all is forgiven. If you will have my fealty, it is yours. I, Ebb of the Tidecasters, do hereby pledge my life and loyalty to Leomond. She dips in a formal vow. I will serve and obey so long as you have need or want of my skills. Okay. Oh, we can only have four people. Damn, I was hoping we'd have five or six. I like bigger parties, and lately, have you ever noticed RPGs nowadays? They've made the parties a lot smaller. I like big parties, personally. Five, six, seven members. They let you play around with things more. I, I think that's the big thing, is that I'm the kind of person that wants to play around with everything, and I just don't have time for multiple playthroughs of any game that I have. And so, like, I know I'm only going to play a game once, and so it really has to count when I go through it. I wish I could have more people. I, I can't get rid of my healer. It's just not an option. Um, right now, we've got a tank, a DPS, two melee DPS, and a range. I'm not going to get rid of Verse, because she's really good. What level is she? Level 4. Technically, we could get rid of Barrack and have him tank, but Barrack's so much better at tanking than I am at the moment that I don't know if that's a good idea. Tough call, but mages are pretty strong. That's it. Kick his ass out. We'll run with her for a little bit. If it doesn't work out, we'll grab Barrack. Vendrian's well has fallen. For the second time since the conquest began, Kairos' armies take the citadel from its defenders. With your help, the Vendrian Guard Rebellion has been crushed. Having taken Ascension Hall with your Scarlet Chorus allies, you satisfied the terms of the Edict. You and the forces of Kairos are free from the Overlord's death sentence. With the threat of execution no longer looming overhead, the Overlord's armies turn their attention away from the citadel and towards each other. The tensions that flared over the long siege reached an explosive crescendo as the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus armies clashed iron and bronze in a hasty, disorganized battle. After a brief exchange that left his soldiers bloodied, Graven Ash withdrew his army from the valley, pulling the disfavored back to their secure fort in the Blade Grove. Grave. Blade Grave. Once his army finished licking their wounds, the voices of Narat ordered the Scarlet Chorus to gather in the Stone Sea and prepare for war, this time against their former allies. The Archon of Secrets instructed his soldiers to respect your lawful claim over the Spire. Though a few greedy stragglers still lurk in the valley, the Scarlet Chorus were content to leave your stronghold uncontested. As days pass, the wounded and injured were nursed to health. You explored your strange bastion and planned your next steps with careful deliberation. As word spreads that the Scarlet Chorus and Disfavor turn on each other, factions once resolved to bend the knee are inspired instead to continue fighting. The Archon's feud has heralded the collapse of Kairos Offensive. Tunan, the Archon of Justice, observes the chaos and discord spreading across the land. The Archon summons his fate binders to return to court at the Bastard City and report on his actions at Vendrian's Well. Oh goody, we gotta go back and talk about why we did what we did. Our petty squabbles over a delayed siege have no doubt evolved into a respectable civil war. The voices of Narat will want to discuss the matter. By now, he's pulled back to the base at Cacophony. I suggest you don't keep him waiting. The last time someone left the voices of Narat waiting, he pulled the skin off of their hand and moved their bones into the shape of a glaring eye. Needless to say, it didn't heal well. I will join you at Cacophony as soon as I speak with Tunan. Do that. The voices of Narat love to entertain new guests, and I'm sure he'll find you quite diverting. Be seeing you, Fate Binder. The dizzying energy from the spire falters, 
Whatever force awoke the powers that reside here gutters and fades, though a faint hum persists in the sculpture at the center. What? Stepping past the portal almost to the edge of the spire, the fifth eye lets out a squeal of panic. My exit just vanished. It was just there. Well, let's look around for a solution. The humming from the curious sculpture pulses and rebuilds and or builds in volume as if to draw your attention. On closer inspection, a series of symbols carved around the base of the structure come into view. One symbol in particular pulses with a blue-white glow. The pattern resembles the glowing lines of light seen on the floor of Ascension Hall moments before you found yourself transported above the clouds. What did we do with the other lady, the leader of the Vendrian Guard? As you stare at the symbol, the chill of the wind abates and your chest swells with warmth. The air finally feels welcoming, your lungs sated at last. I'd be careful going any closer. This whole tower is humming with energies that we don't understand. Lantry holds his quill poised above a sheet of parchment with anticipation. Now, I didn't say back away. Let's find out what it does. Just be cautious. You've staked your claim on the tower and everything in it. Whatever the sculpture is, it belongs to you. I can feel power running through this place. Eb surveys the surroundings, her gaze sweeping to the object at the center. You can sense the magic of the spire even from down below, but up here, this close to the axis of the spire, the deluge of energy is numbing. I touch it. The stone is smooth and cool to the touch. Marbling patterns move with the curves of the sculpture, looking more akin to veins than imperfections of rock. You can't find a single marking to suggest an artisan's tool. As you're about to draw your finger away, you feel a sudden return of pressure on your fingertip as the sculpture touches you back. Whack, 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 whack. I just want to love you, statue. Ooh. The sculpture is still once again. There's a rush, of, a rush of warmth through your body, a jolt of innervation that steadies your balance, a barrage of tactile sensation floods your mind as you feel footsteps and wind, but not on your face or your limbs. A moment later, the flood of information begins to make sense. You're feeling the wind against the spire and even the weight of your own feet, as if the spire were a second spine. With this connection made, you feel your awareness pull from this place, not as a traveler, but as one glimpsing the world from impossibly far away. In this moment, there is nothing you cannot see, though you see it nearly all at once in a flood of sensation that is difficult to parse. You see a spire at the crossing of an ancient stone structure, two walls extending off into the distance. At the base of this eternal spire, settlers and merchants act in every way unconcerned, toiling under the observation of unforgiving taskmasters. As the shadow of the spire falls over them, the mood changes. The settlers pause in shared unease and look up at the sky, toward you. Though you haven't seen it in person, you are certain this is a vision of Lethian's crossing, for nowhere else are the tearsmen brave or desperate enough to settle at the intersection of bane-ridden old walls. Near this settlement, built at the joining of ancient walls, you see a breach in the massive masonry, a cleft into the forbidden, hidden realm within the old walls. Um, I guess we'll go to the old wall entrance? Shadows envelop you, muting all sound and vision with slight delay. There is a feeling of perversion, of wrongness. Whatever arcane power is allowing your senses to drift free of your body seems to falter in this place. Figures haunt the stone halls, drifting emanations of cloud, claw, and fang. They pay you no heed, but you fear them all the same. In the depths of this forbidden place, the deepest chamber is bathed in light. An arcane symbol illuminates the floor, though the details hurt your eyes when you focus. The gentle tug, your focus pulls back to a new horizon, though it takes you a moment to recognize it as Vendrian's well. You've returned to the awareness of your immediate surroundings. The effect leaves you unsteady on your feet. The spire feels similar to the one you now occupy, though instead of radiating arcane life, it reeks of dust and crumbling stone, a branch withering once pulled from its tree. It reaches for you with a barely perceptible tug. The link between you and the spire recedes. The arcane bond is still present, but the mystical energies for the moment are quiet. Your body flooded with excitement and fatigue. It's unclear whether the mystic connection is strengthening you or siphoning. The tower offers nothing by way of answer, but you know that asking would only yield more silence and mystery. The deluge of sensation is over. But the positions of the other spires still linger in your mind. From your vantage point atop the mountain spire, you can easily spot the mysterious creatures, each of them rising high above their distant surroundings. Did you sense that? Landry signs a long sigil in the air, squinting at you as he works his cantrip. 
The ripples are everywhere. When you move, the magic of this place, it stirs and churns. The portal over there, those burning braziers, they all grow more intense as you approach. I think it's responding to your presence. Before we get ahead of ourselves, it's worth remembering that you ended Kairos Edict. It's no small feat. Maybe your connection to this place is related. Either way, sounds like something for the arcane minded to investigate. Speak with me after you see Tunan, Fatebinder. The disfavored need to be shown their place, but Dog acts up. You use a firm hand to put it back down. If we are to succeed in the tears, we must work quickly. I will be waiting. And like that, we've run out of time for the day. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Tyranny, which is getting really, really interesting. We've got ourselves a castle, and we didn't have to do betrayal or murder or anything to get it. Like, we got it just for freebies. Uh, if you have time, check out the Patreon. I have a Patreon, which allows me to hang out with you guys on Discord and give you all kinds of cool rewards for keeping the channel afloat. You can support the channel through there and also get cool stuff for yourself. Other than that, check the game out down below, and I will see you all in future episodes of Tyranny. Bye, everybody.